and welcome to this evening's Craft Along with myself, Barbara Gray from Clarity. I hope there's somebody else in the building other than me. Uh, just give us a shout, Paul. Let me know. I know our Paul Church is in the building with you. And, uh, and we're set for a really interesting evening, I do hope. So come on in and let's get started. Um, we're looking at those wonderful plates, those groovy plates by uh, Linda Williams. I think this is the fourth set. And, uh, and we're going to be looking at some tricks and tips and uh, some new techniques that you might enjoy. Good morning, Sally. Always good to see someone. Then I know I'm not alone. I have one question because we've got a completely new system here and I'm testing it for the first time. Is the volume good or is it too loud? Could anybody let me know? There's nothing worse. Morning. I mean, good evening, everybody. Lovely to have your company. Just let me know if it's too loud because I think I can adjust it from here. Um, or you could turn it, turn me down. <laughs> There's always an option too, isn't it? And if I'm a little bit nervous to start with, it's okay. I'll get into the, I'll get into the swing of it. I'll get into the swing of it. Let me just get rid of all this on the, on my knees. That's better. Yeah, because I'm at home. Good evening. Not too loud. Thanks, Jill. Um, that's great. Jane's in the building. Hey, we've got lots of lovely friends joining us this evening. So who's going to be crafting along with me? Hmm? Who's going to be crafting along? Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, um, we'll have a look at what we need. The plate that I was going to, these are the two plates that I was going to work with, plus your standard kind of starter kit and bits and pieces. Um, if I just show you the two plates, it's these two from the um, from the latest set. There you go. So you can take a look at which plates we're going to be using and, uh, and perhaps you can get ready and then we'll get started, a little warm up. There's no rush here, friends. It's Friday night, it's seven o'clock and it's a laid back travel gently craft along with Barbara, Barbie. Come on in. Good morning. Good evening. I'm going to keep saying good morning, Judith. You know that, don't you? Old habits die hard. That's because, of course, we're usually in the shack, aren't we? But I've been making, I've been making plans. The reason we've got this new rig here um, is because I'm going to start doing some more YouTubes and uh, just generally uh, just recording things and and um i think that that will be um i think that will be a welcome addition to our clarity palette don't you think so ah ich hab gerade wo ist sie denn marion grüß dich greetings from germany um uh, how far afield are we do tell me so we've got marion in in uh, north germany who else have we got here let's have a look See who's the furthest away. I wonder if you've got any friends from Australia or from America, from the States. Hey? No pressure. Hi, Ken. Nice to have your company too. Um, it was Linda's birthday yesterday, Linda Williams, and so she's going out with the family this evening. Therefore, she apologises that she's not going to be with us. Um, you've got me instead. But I've been practising all day. <laughs> I've been practicing all day. I'm in the kitchen. Good for you. Hilda Smith, Scotland. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, because several of you have been inquiring about the gold. Now, you know our Francis Knott on the design team. She's really good at the gold work, isn't she? That's traditional parchment look. So I thought we'd have a little look at that as well this evening. So we're going to do uh, a real simple, very achievable card, like put that through its paces, lots of tricks and tips. And then when we've done that, we'll start weaving in um, a little bit of uh, gold work. There are so many different ways. There are so many different ways. I mean, just from a calligraphy point of view, my, my 30 years in the paper crafting industry have served me well on this one. I just needed to check that what I do on paper, I can do on parchment. And yes, I think I know how Francis Knott does it. It was just a question of sitting down and working it out. 
Right. So there you go. Everybody in the building, let's have a look. 182 friends have joined us thus far, according to my screen. Nice. Um, so, Paul, are we ready to rock and roll? Have you got your Have you got your tipple? I've got my tea. Missouri, USA. Robin, lovely to have your company. There you go. <laughs> nice. Right, should we get going? I had a little nap beforehand. I was so tired. I thought, I know, I'm going to have a power nap. Hour long, a bit longer than normal. Um, and now I'm full of beans, full of beans. I could go all night now, but I won't. Well, I may do. <laughs> have you got anywhere to go? Have you got anything important to do? Let me know. I put the wow glitter on but it doesn't look very good. Rather heavy looking. What am I doing wrong? Well, I tell you what, who said that? Linda, beautiful rider. Well, Linda, beautiful rider, uh, what we'll do is when we get to do the gold, I'll also, exactly what I'm doing with the gold, I will show you how to do the, um, the glitter too, really delicately. Okay? Right. Let's get started. Um, so the first thing we want to do is have a look at the card that we're going to head towards. We'll deconstruct it. That's always a good idea because it means that you can see exactly how the layers come in. So we'll do that. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll just go off at different angles and learn some things. U.S. Iowa. Welcome, Kathy, from Iowa. Nice. Okay. So let's have a look. Um, we've got this camera and we're going to use this beautiful card. Nice, nice, nice. So this is a very achievable, very lovely card by our dear friend Glynis. And I thought that this would be a really good starting place. And what we'll do is we'll deconstruct it. Let me come in a little tiny bit further so that you can see it better. Is that okay? Good. Now, I'll tell you what else I want to do, and I hate to do this just in case I lose you. I want to see, I want to see if I can make this screen bigger. Oh, I love Max. You see, this is why. I'm a Mac girl. I'm an Apple Mac girl. And I've been dealing with a PC. I've got to tell you, this has been a PC system here. It takes up half the room. A Mac is like a tablet. It is this thin. It is so lovely. It's all, it's all included. And I know what I'm doing because I've been using Apple Macs since the very first little classic thing that looked like a box, like a, yeah, cool. And the screen was that big. <laughs> you see? And so, you know, after 30, hang on, 19, let me see, 1990, 30 odd years of using a Mac, it's like everything, you know, you just get used to it, don't you? And I don't like PCs. <laughs> I, the reason I don't like them is because I don't know what I'm doing with them. I don't know the shortcuts. Macs are brilliant for that stuff. I'm a Mac girl too. Love them. I tell you what, once you've been on a Mac, you'll never go back. Now, that sounds a little bit dodgy, doesn't it? <laughs> once you've used a Mac, you'll never go back. There you go. Right. So let's have a look at this. That's better. See, so my screen now, twice the size. I can see you from a long way away. Good. So this is the card. Uh, enough waffling. And let's have a look at it and let's deconstruct it. Thank you so much, Glynis, for helping us with this card. Now, so we've got a little tag. We'll have a look at that as well. And let's just deconstruct the card. So we've got, to begin with, we're going to work our way backwards. We've got a seven by seven white card blank. And then we've got, let's have a look here. So we've got Glynis used green. Okay. These are our companion papers. She's used green in the background. There's another green, slightly different actually. You can see that, can't you? Mm. And on the back of this one, you can see it's different because this one's lilac. These are our companion papers. This one's red. So I thought, well, we'll try two different ones. So we've got choices. We've got choices, choices. And then you see, then you've got this piece. Now, this is slightly different again. You can see here, this has got an edge around it, a frame, and this one hasn't. 
So we'll stick to this one though, but this is just to show you the layers, right? So we've got that there on the green, it looks very nice. It's attached with brads. We will use brads to do that. That's handy. And if you feel that that's a little bit dark, then you can always slip a piece of, see if you put a piece of other parchment behind it, you could cut a little tiny piece of parchment that, that, that to that edge there, right? And you'll see that that really lightens up that centerpiece, doesn't it? See? So that's always worth knowing that if you, if you feel it's a little bit somber or dark, and you'll see here that I added a little bit of shadow down the bottom. I just wanted to see um, how you could blend the colors. So I thought I'll show you that trick as well. And then also one of the other things I want to show you is we're going to stipple. Let's have a look. We'll stipple the, um, the star. So if we go in close, just let it focus for a moment. There you go. You can see it's stippled. So we'll do that. And while we've got this shot, we can take a quick look, for example, at this little area here. And you can see how we've cut out this area so that we can use that to hang our, our, little, our little tag. Right, so lots of different sh things to do here. Um, and then the other thing that I was going to... Um, to talk about was gold. And this is a perfect, we'll go off at a tangent on this card and I'll show you. So here, for example, you can see that Glynis, she's used um, the plate exactly as it comes. So here's the plate, for example. And if we overlay it, you can see this is uh, one of five plates that was in the latest collection. We'll, we'll have a look at um, the, the, the different sets before we begin. But you can see that Glynis has just used the, the tree as it comes there. And what I was thinking, I found another fantastic piece of artwork by uh, Frances Knott. And you can see here, she's used exactly what you're asking after. She's used gold where the dots are, right? And then she's put the writing in gold as well. So I thought, right, now that we want to try. So we've been, I've been, I've been experimenting and looking at that. And I thought we could weave that into our craft along this evening. How does that sound? Yeah, good. So we'll keep that one uh, to the side as well. Let's just pop that over there. And, um, and then the other thing I wanted to just explain was before we go too far, the companion papers, when I, when I talk about these papers, um, what I'm talking about, these particular colors, they are from the Indian summer companion papers. So you can see straight away, there's the red, there's the green, there are different, there are four of each, you can see here, and then we just, we, we run into different colors, there are lots of greens, lots of beautiful tones, neutrals. This is quite something, this set, actually. I love the greys as well. Um, and I think there's another really cool green. There's another green there. There you go. That's the one. Because this one's got the purple on the back. See? Really dark. These are fantastic colours. So this is the Indian Summer range. In case you were wondering which one I'd gone to or Glynis had gone to. Right, so that's what we're going to do. And the reason that I'm starting with this and then I'm going to um, I'm going to showcase a few pieces of artwork because this will give some of you a chance to go and get the little bits and pieces that you're going to need for the job. So let's just take a look here. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to Pico cut um, a piece of A4 parchment. And just so that you know, if you are crafting along, you can you can pre-cut this. This is the the largest of the pico dies, the largest of the pico dies. Glynis actually hand did this, but um, we're not doing that, people. We're gonna cut it with a with a pico die. So we're gonna work from the outside in. That's the only thing. It's certainly much more intelligent, in my opinion, to Get your, get your shape ready, get your outer ready, and then start working on your inside. So A4 parchment you need for this one. A4 parchment. Let's have a look. We've got A5. 
but a5 doesn't do the job here on in this case so we're going to use a4 right and when you cut out out of a piece of a4 it's great really because you've still got all this it's not wasteful you've got all this which will be perfect for making our tags and practicing our gold work so you're not wasting anything you're just going to snip that there and there and then we'll use that as we go as we travel along okay so that's that's going to be for those of you who want to join in you're going to need this and then you also of course will use the we're going to use the groovy uh plate to go with it so i that's where i will begin in a minute is adding the um the lines to i've already pre-cut it yeah so that's where i shall start when i do start let me just pop that to one side for the minute okay so that's what we're going to need and then we'll just need uh, some pergoliners. If you've got those, we're going to use some pergoliners. You're going to need your starter kit. You're going to need your groovy plate mate. You're going to need your tools from your starter kit, one, two, three, and four, or whatever you choose to use. Um, you're going to need your blending pens to blend the colors and some dorsal oil and a spot on sponge. One of those. Okay. So you need that, that, that. There's not loads. We always seem to use the same stuff, really, don't we? It's just the designs that are new today. Right, so we'll use that, that, and that. And when we get to the gold, when we get to the gold, the way I'm going to show you, we're going to use a mapping pen, a mapping pen. Right, now you're going to say, well, you haven't got any mapping pens for sale. Well, we have, but we haven't. So the nibs we do have and the handles are on the way which is about as useful as a pen with no ink i know but many of you have got the blending pens right which are exactly the same handle for the mapping pen nib as for the blending nib so all you need is one of them and then you can put this in there okay so i'm just saying you need one of those and I do feel, do you think that I wouldn't rather have them in stock? What do you think? You know, this has been the bane of my last two months, this thing, trying to get this sorted out. So you need that, right, and a couple of other little bits and pieces. If you're one of the um, one of our shackers in the morning, you'll be very happy because you've already got this. You've got the water brushes and you've got these... Um, Perfect pearls. I'm going with the gold one, clearly, right? And just in case you were wondering, I spoke to Paul this morning and we put together a festive bundle. So you can see here, we've got what we're going to do with the gold today. You can do, obviously, with green, red, blue and gold. So this is a very festive little bundle. And we thought that we would gather those together for one-stop shoppers, all right? So that's available from now, if I'm not mistaken. I've got a really cool, it's the same, this is the same thing that we would do, not on parchment, but on paper or on card, calligraphy, it's the same thing. So we'll do that, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, okay, so you need that, 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 right. Now, what I want to do now is just let you go gather your bits, so to speak, right, before we begin. And while you're doing that, so that you don't think you're missing anything, I'm going to show you the, the different collections of plates. I'm going to show you the different collections of plates very quickly and show you a couple of bits of artwork. But what I want to do, I've selected the artwork specifically with gold in mind. So this is going to be very Francis not heavy because Francis is the person that's been um, definitely... Uh, driving that bus okay on the samples and so let's spot and let's look at the way that Francis uses the gold okay and then when we do it you'll be you'll realize it isn't that hard once you know what you're doing it just looks phenomenal right okay so the first thing we'll do is we'll start with the we'll start with the folder we'll start with so we've got at the moment, we've got four sets of Christmas treasures by Linda Williams, and we've been releasing them five at a time 
five plates at a time since May, every month. And then in between, we've been having craft alongs, highlighting and getting to grips with one or two of the plates in the latest collection. So, so this is, if you're wondering what this is all about, that is what this is all about. This is the fourth craft along using the fourth set. But let's just cast back to the first set and let's have a look. I'm going to pan out a little bit so that you can actually see the now, so you can see the plates. So let's just take a look here and we'll, we'll take a look at the plates. So the first plate, if you recall, it was using, it was, there, there are five of them. It was a Silent Night, Holy Night. And each of the sets has a carol with it. So this was a Silent Night, Holy Night carol. Right, really lovely frames. And then the plates were this one, the Glistening Winter Wishes, which was very popular, the Twinkling Christmas, that one. And then there was one more. Yes, that's right, Joy to the World with the Little Houses. So that one, those two, and those two were the set. And if you remember in the first craft along, we did, we did something with that. Now let's have a look at one of these. There are two for each collection. And what I'll do is I'll offer it up to the top camera so that you can see the gold. Can you see when I hold it like that? Gold in the windows and little swirls. That's all there is, just a little tiny swirl. Got it? Right, so that is the that is obviously, that's Francis's work. Okay, and she's used, isn't that something else really? Right, and then we've got one more, which is using gold as well. This is Francis's. And you can see here, she's gone round the outside on this one. You can see clearly where the gold is and in the windows of the church. And then the lettering, the first letter of each one. O come, all ye faithful. You see? And then she's done a drop shadow in gold. And also, if I'm not mistaken, there are little dots around the outside. Can we see that? Am I dreaming? Let's see if we go to this camera here. Let's see if we can take the dots. Can you see them? in the centers of those beautiful designs on the outside. Isn't that something else? It's not that hard once you know what you're doing. Okay, but what we're looking at here is the gold. Okay, so let's go to the next one. That's those two that I wanted to show you. Now we'll go to the next set. So that was set one. Then the next month we went to set two, Joy to the World. This was this particular set here with this lovely pattern. And now we've got our three wise men. We had the beautiful stained glass window, that outer edge was gorgeous. And then we had the crib, and then we had the little town of Bethlehem. So this was very much the essence of Christmas, this collection. If you haven't got them, I mean, they're all available individually, but what we were doing was kind of spreading, what we were doing was spreading the, the there were 25 plates, there was so much for one collection. And so we just thought we'd, we'd spread them out and release them five at a time over five months. So the fifth one's next month. Mm. So this way it's great because we get to indulge the plates more and play with them. Now let's have a look again, Francis Not Look where the gold is. You can see when I hold it, it's in the star. Behold the star of Bethlehem. And then the guys, you can see just on their cloaks. See? And the tassels. And again, around the edge, those little dots. Let's take a look on the real close camera so we can see. Let it just focus. There, now you can see it beautifully. There you go, great camera work. I do love a Mac. Right, you see? There you are. Look at that. All right? So seeing that up really closely, you can see how immaculate that work is. There we are. Okay, so that's, that's the first one. And then while we're on that camera, let's just stay with this camera. We've got, oh, little town of Bethlehem. There we are, look, black and then gold overlaid. All the windows. You can see where the gold is coming in again, can't you? Isn't that great? Okay. So that is the second collection. There we are. And then the third collection, the following month, we went to fa la 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 Right, here we go. So this was this collection now. We've got Santa Claus on this one. And then we've got... This is great. The uh, Home for Christmas, the Baubles, and See for Christmas, that lovely garland. 
So this was the one where everybody started saying, right, I want to know how she did the gold. This is Francis's work again. So let's just take a look again at this because obviously everybody wanted to see this. Look at the writing, the text, see the swirls and twirls, check out the dots around the outside. Okay. So a lot of it is just traditional coloring. I say just very beautiful, immaculate, traditional coloring. And what she's done is if you take a look here, she's taken the garland and then she's filled it in, hasn't she? So she's just, she's taken the groovy plate as a pattern and then she's just infilled it, just gone round and done it again. So, but it's the gold we're interested in this time. And then this one, this is gorgeous. Just a tiny little flash of Santa's, let's look around the edge and you'll see. I think sometimes when you see it up close and you're able to really get a feel, look at the dots, dots around the outside that luster, okay, obviously traditional colouring in again by Francis, I know, super talent, look at that lovely furry, and that's something else, hey, okay? there you go, so this is again, it's a Francis Knott speciality, but we're going to learn this, we're going to learn this, my friends, right, so that was that one, and then last month, and this is the, this is, so that was the first folder full, and then we moved into the second folder, Let's have a look here. So we've got the second folder. Right, and this was the this was the set that we were talking about. And this is the set we're dealing with this month. So we had the holly and the ivy. And we're going to be using these little, these are great for little tags, just superb, right? So that's that one. And then there's the little tree. So there's the tree that we're going to use. I've got that here handy. I've got that one too. So that's that one that we're going to use. Then we had the mistletoe, which we did on, on air. And then we've got the poinsettia, which is rather lovely. Once again, let's stop with the poinsettia, Francis Knott. And this is really cool uh, because you can see exactly, look at the swirls. Look. Yeah. So that's where the gold is, just coming out, just swirls, just for you. There you go. Season's greetings. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> so that's that one. And then this is a really interesting one, right? So now this one here, this is by Carol Baker. And I want to show you this one because this is a trick that this gold here is the exception. And you'll see, see the, the frame around the outside. Now let's show you this because Josie Davidson came up with this idea um, at the retreat, at the spa retreat. And um, she actually, when, when we get to go to discuss the gold, because this is another gold application, you'll see that the lace work around the outside is gold. Well, the reason for that is because, let me just show you, what Josie did was, what we did was we painted, this is all she did, well, I say all, she took this uh, acrylic Pebio paint, right, and they painted around the outside Bef and let it dry before they did their work. So, so, so it looked a bit of a mess until they cut it out. And then they got, it was so easy, really, once you realized that what she was doing was she was just taking a paintbrush and this and running it around the outside. And then they did their needle work, their multi-needle tool work, and, and then cut it out. And of course it was dry and that's how it dried, which I thought looked so cool you know, um, and you can see you've got some beautiful gold luster on that, and that's using the gold acrylic paint, which is not what we're going to be doing when we're doing our calligraphy, but it is definitely worth investigating. It's not that yellow dull th sort of gold that you often get with pens. or So, so worth looking into is this uh, acrylic paint by Pebio. And um, there are... I think we've got a bundle of it. We've got uh, pearl, again, festive, pearl, silver, and gold. So, Paul, maybe you could just flash up the um, the details for that. And I and I show you as well. I I just I just painted a piece of you know our doodles. Look, there you go. I just painted it with the gold to show you what it looks like on 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 paper too or on card. It's very fest, very very gold actually, <laughs> very gold. And I probably would do another layer if I had more time. But there you go. So there, that's what we're on at the moment. 
And I'll just put these to one side. And now I would say that you would all be ready to crack on. Eh? You should all have your bits and pieces and we should be able to get started after our little gallery. Yes? Cool. Right. Okay. Paul, is everything okay? Are we happy? Am I doing okay here? My little marathon. Little, little room above the garage. Hey, we doing all right. Let's get started. Good. Half past. Exactly where we need to be. So the first thing we're going to do is take our... Are you ready to rock and roll now? Come on. Let's get started. We need our starter kit. Groovy plate, mate. Because now it's going to be heads down. Now we're going for it. There are so many different things to consider here. So the first thing I want to do is take this. Actually, if we're going to do that first, right, forget that. We need to put the lines on this one first. Let's get started with the lines on this one. So where's the front and where's the back? We're working on the back of this. We're just going to put the lines on here. So we'll take our tumble dry sheet and we'll just, we'll just smooth so that, see, because it's got the, the pico around the edge here now, okay, it's important. If you do that, it will pull. I can tell you it is going to start fluffing. So that's why we push away, okay, and then we transfer. So let's come in a bit closer so you can see what we're doing. And we'll put the edge around the ledge first, and then we'll take it from there, all right? So on the actual pico groovy mat... I know, Sally, I agree with you. Francis' work up close, I just wanted to do it. And uh, and I think that it's really worth, you know, you don't see it like that, do you? It's too, you've got to really indulge it. Let's have a look. So on the plates, you can see there are, we've got to line up those, those picots on the edge. These were uh, inspiration as well, if, and if I say so myself. This, this is um, Jim's handiwork, the Pico dies. Makes such a difference, such a difference. We need our, our guard. We're just going to hold it in place now while we do this. So what we want to do, let me just show you. I'll show you one that I did earlier so you understand where we're headed. We're going to put the tiniest little lines on the outside here, which looks so traditional parchment, right? So we'll do that. But then what we'll do is while we've got it in place and we're holding it in place, we're going to use on the because this is like a nested. This is like a nested extension plate, if you like. Right. So we're going to use the second line, the one, the inner one on the inside. You could do whatever you like. But this then right, becomes the house or the, the frame for this one, which sits perfectly within that one. So you could decide. So what we're doing is making a frame, which we can colour in, you see? And within that frame, there is room for play too, right? Excuse me digressing again, but check out Francis's, right? If I come up, right, look at Glynis's, right? So it's the same principle here, right? You've got these panels. Now look into this panel, look into my eyes, and look into this panel, and you can see dots a go-go dots joined up. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. See the difference? So there's no reason why we can't add a few dots into this one too. Yeah? To zhuzh it up a bit. I know. It's all clever stuff. And the thing is, this is all very achievable. So the first thing we want to do is take our uh, groovy tools. I'm going to use the number one tool, the one with no ball at the end. And I'm going to, do you know, I'm not sure about these glasses for this work. <gasps> it's all right. All right, let me just check. So my groovy tab is there and there. So I'm going to do these two sides. Yeah, I'll do those two sides. And then I'll go back and do the other two sides. Right, so outer one first. Here we go. Go twice. And then down here, outer one. Down we go. That's good. Nice and crisp white line. Then we'll go again on the second one in. 
and down again. If you feel it's tugging, then it means that you didn't use enough of the tumble dryer sheet to make it smooth. Okay, so we've got, so you can see why the groovy guard is so invaluable. All right, so I've done those two sides. Now, while I've got this in place, why don't I put this one in, okay? So I'm going to go to, not the first one, but the second one in. So I can make my border a little bit, mm, my frame, if you like, my, my colouring in part. I'll make it a bit bigger, a bit more room. Right, but it's, that's entirely up to you. See, so you're getting, oh, hello. That's it. And then we're going to do this one. So you could do a double one if you fancied, but I'm going to keep it simple. So I've done that half. Okay, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to fiddle with it. I'm just going to hold it like that. Now I'll take my groovy tab and pop that on there. So that's holding that in place. Then I'll keep my, I'll use my guard, left hand with that. I used my guard now to pick this one up. I've done this side, so I pop that down. So nothing's moving; everything's still in place. Now I do exactly the same thing for the outer edge. Right, outer one first, number one tool. Okay, this is pretty straightforward, really. And you may think this is difficult, but I'm telling you, right? What is difficult is <laughs> cutting this lot out by by hand. <laughs> Now that's difficult. Not not even difficult once you can pico cut, just time consuming. You know, and for the average busy bird, really, I'd rather use my pico cutting skills for these lovely intricate pieces like that, you know? Or round here, where you have to go in with a, you know, look at that. Now that you gotta cut out by hand. Or the inside of this one, look, like this here. See? That you've got to cut out by hand. This is all cut out by hand. This is cut out by hand. Focus on that, you know? Pico dies are very useful. Right, so I've done that. And now I just want to do that second one in again. Okay, so we've done that. And we've done that. We'll go twice to make it super crisp. There you go. So now we've got our... We've done our framework. We're ready to go. That's on the back. There's the front. This one can be put to bed. Don't need that for the time being anymore. So pop that one away. And this is going to be the piece that we work on. Now, let's have a look. So we're working with the tree plate. And we know now that that sits in there beautifully. So off we go. So what we've got to do now is trace this out. That we can use, we need a groovy plate mate. So we've got two different, we've actually got two different starter kits. You know that. We've got the one, the traditional one that most of you have got, but we've also got the grid plate mate, this one. So there's two different starter kits, and this one's the one that's got loads of different patterns. So I'm just showing you, right, with all these different patterns, that this is a library of patterns for these panels. There are so many, look, it's, it's there for you. So if you wanted, for example, you just go in there and there's your pattern straight away. See, it's the right width. There's another one, there's another pattern. There are so many different patterns depending on the width that you give your border. You get it? It's really cool. So, so I'm just saying that that is a, a different kind of um, grid plate, groovy plate, mate. It's got the same aperture, it's got the same hole, but this is also a great pattern plate, right? So worth looking into this one. Uh, so what we'll do is it's up to you. Six one half dozen of the other. I'll, I'll probably I'll use this one tonight because I think I want to use it to show you. Um, how to get in there into those borders and and add more interest to to this you know i mean simple's beautiful don't get me wrong this is lovely but you know on a craft along let's have a look at a few little tricks and tips you know so we've got that one that's cool that's definitely 
the right way around, I think. Yeah, back to front. If you can read groovy in the top right hand corner, then you're in the right direct, you're looking in at the right side. Okay, so let's see. The first thing we want to do, we'll take this, we'll pop this over the top, and we will trace out our design. Okay, All right, this will take a little while, but we're going to do it. How many of you are actually crafting along with me? Go on, tell me. Who's crafting along with me? Anybody or is it just me? Right, we're on the back. I'm going to stick that down with a groovy tab. My mum packs the groovy tabs. My mum packs the groovy tabs and the little nib tabs. Did you know that? Well, yes, she does. Bless her. And she enjoys doing it, you know. She apologises to me if she's tired and can't do it. I said, well, don't apologise, Mum. <laughs> you know, it's, it's greatly appreciated. Everything you do is greatly appreciated. So let me just show you where we're headed now. This is where we're going now. Look, I practice me gold, right? Yeah, yeah. Look at that for a gold. I know. Looking forward. Let me see. Crafting. Yeah, we've got a few crafting along. Excellent. So now what we're going to do, is craft, we're going to craft along. But, but, because we want to make the dots gold, okay, we're not going to make them, this is where we, we deviate a little bit. Instead of using, um, we're going to, we're going to be gentler. We're going to go gently on the, on the dots. So let's do the outside first, right? The point that I'm making here, okay, this is the point. Anything, if you wanted to do this traditional type of colouring in, then you're not going to use your number one tool to get the design. You'll go to your number two tool or possibly even your number three tool, okay? That's the first thing you've got to know because when you go over this, what you'll see is that Francis has used this more as a, as a pattern, right, and less as a, as a groovy plate. So this one, you see there's white lines and then the, the holly is col colored in. Also very beautiful. It's just very different. Okay. So these are the, this is what we, we've got the choices. We're going to mix and match it up a little bit here. We're going to do the number one around the outside. Okay. But when we get to the dots, we're going to use the, the berries. We're going to use the number two tool. Okay. So berries number two tool. Let me show you why. When we get in tight, you'll see, let's get in tight on Glynis's. Right. Number one tool for the leaves, number two tool for the berries. Okay. When we go to the dots on the, not on here, let me just show you here. When we go to the dots on the tree, we're going to use the number two tool because that will be easier because we're going to put gold on it. All right. If you fancy. Okay. Now, let's have a look. So we're going to use, my suggestion would be, since we're doing this, that we go through the whole thing and we do the number two, we do the dots first. I'm going to put my other glasses on for this job, my Dame Edna's, so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, yes, that's much better. Right, so I'm going to go all the way through here and do the, do the berries first with my number two tool see and i'm leaning i'm using my groovy guard to hold everything down while i work okay it looks like a couple of berries there and the thing to do when you're doing this is don't think oh this is going to take forever, because then it will. You just have to go through the process. And it takes a little bit of getting used to. Just working your way around. But what you'll find is it's very, very therapeutic. But we want to get the, the berries in the right place. So don't rush and miss. Mm -hmm. If you use a light wave, a light table, 
you'll find it's always easier to see what you're doing. But quite honestly, I think you can see what I'm doing here too, can't you? Let's have a look. Berries. So we're going to do the one, anything that we're going to use the number two tool. See, I, I think it's easier to do that first. Because you can always go back over it with a number one tool, but you can't undo it. If you've used the number one, you can't go, oh, hang on, that should have been a number two tool. This, the number two gives you a softer outline. That's the, the bottom line. So you can go from soft to crisp, but you can't go from crisp to soft if you know what I mean. Now, I'm not the fastest parcher in the West, um, but then it isn't a race, is it? Let's have a look. Round we go. And then, and then we'll go again. So, See, and because there are friends crafting along, that's the whole idea of a craft along, right? I don't want to jump to, here's one I did earlier, because, of course, you can't, can you? So let's get the, let's get the main thrust of the artwork in place, okay? Because then that way... You can always, let me come in a bit tighter on this, hello. There we go, so you can see better. Um, you can always come back to it. I mean, that's one of the things about parchment is that you're, you're supposed to work in layers. Right, so I think I've got as many there as I need. And then what I'm going to do now is just, I'm going to do the, actually the star as well. I'll do that with a number two tool. I want that to be quite soft as well. And then I'm going to use the number two tool for the, probably even you could go number three tool. Let's have a try. See what happens if you do number three tool. Check it out. Let me just see. If I do number three. Let me just see. See, the larger the ball tool, the lighter. Yeah, let me just check something. Yeah, that would work as well, you know. But for the sake of... Let's just stick to the number two. Mm. Let's just do this. Okay, round we go. And then this, then this way, we're giving ourselves... the guideline... This is literally for the gold, you see, without embossing too much. I don't know, I think, I'm thinking, should I have used the three? But I tried it earlier on and I know that two works. I mean, do you consider this to be artwork that you want to be finished and beautiful? Or are you using this as a kind of a template so that you're learning from it? See, to me, this is all about learning. You know, you want to make yourself a kind of a, a prototype so that, you know, you can refer to it and go, oh, yeah, at that point, I changed to the number three tool. Let me see if it works better. I think the inquiring mind is, is just exactly that, isn't it? It's how, how you learn. See, if we just do, like, I'm going to do half the tree. Here we go. You can, you can either do what I do now or you can crack on with the number three, with the number two. But I'm going to go now to the number three. So I know that half the, half the tree is using the larger ball tool. Here we go. And then when we go to do the gold, we'll know very quickly whether we should have, whether it's better to use the larger ball tool, right? Or the smaller ball tool. I've got a feeling I'm going to be happier on the number three, but that remains to be seen. See, it's one thing thinking it, it's another thing doing it, isn't it? 
do you lie do you know i lie awake at night and and i i go through things in my head and i, I wonder if that would work and i wonder if, i've got pottery that i think about all the time and this last night it was definitely the gold that was in my dreams i was thinking about whether which which technique to use to get luster to get a beautiful luster on the and and how to use the plates as a pattern and, blah, 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 and what ball tool to use and that was that's so typical of a crafter isn't it to be thinking all the time i like i like that though that's what keeps my mind active right so now i've done that bit's three Let's do another couple of bits in three. Because I tell you what I'm going to do. The bottom part of the tree, I'm even, for the sake of research and development, I'm going to go with a number four tool, the, the largest ball tool, just to see if that works. Let me do, do you mind if I just check my batteries? <laughs> Not my batteries. Oh, no, we're all right. We're all right. Let's have a look. So... So let's have a look. Round we go. Keep going. Are you in a rush to go anywhere, friends? Because we could be here a little while. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not in a hurry. I'm really not. But if you fancy hanging out until we get done what we want to get done, I'm more than happy to stay. We could have a little potty break. And come back, couldn't we? It's up to you. But um, so now, what 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 am I on here? I'm on, I'm still on three at the moment. And this little part here, I'm just for the sake of it, for the hell of it, I'm going to turn around to number four. I might regret this though, because I've got a feeling this is too big, or it might be the exact one that we need. <laughs> Have we got any ideas? I mean, there are no experts in the building because Linda's not here for a start. That leaves me. <laughs> that leaves me with me inquiring mind, which is great, isn't it? <laughs> um, but no. I think this will be fine. Right. Do you find it hurts your hand? When you, when you don't do a lot of it, let me give you a clue. If your hand is cramping up when you're doing this, because mine is, right? Um, every now and again, you just need to stretch it like that, splay your fingers, right? And, and also, you could also, if you press it down, look, I'll show you. If you press down on the, like, like a, like that, but press down. It helps your fingers stretch them, right? And the other thing is that um, I've often seen as well is if you take the if you take the the tool instead of holding it like a pen like that, right? Let's change the tool to that angle, like that. And what you'll find is it it yeah. See straight away, it doesn't hurt so much. It's not so tight because now. It's it's redistributing the pressure. Isn't that funny? Now I could go I could go all day now. And then when this gets a bit tight, then I can go back to the pencil holding. See? Like that. Like that. So you put it in between those two fingers. And then you hold it like that. Got it? Try it. So who's left-handed? Have we got any lefties in the building like me? Now, don't get impatient, Barbara. The thing about the number four tool is because it's so large, you tend to glide more. But there you go. Come on, left-handies. Hands up. Left hands up. Who's a lefty? Paul, have a count up. 
usually there are a lot less left-handed people in the building than right hand especially our generation right i think i've got the lot so we've got uh number two tool number three tool and number four tool there we go nice now while we're here <laughs> while we're here let's go to the number three tool okay and let's do the words because the reason I say this is because these words are in gold and we could try them, couldn't we? Let's give it a go. Come on. But we're going to use the number three tool, really, like we did here, to keep it kind of not embossed. We don't want to emboss it. We just need it. To, we need to be able to see it, don't we, to be able to write it. So what we're going to do is use the number three tool. And then we're just going to give ourselves warm that'll do wishes actually i'm going to lean on the groovy guard rather than just because i'm a lefty i need it on that side right let's do this excellent 230 people in the room god blimey can you imagine if we were doing a workshop it'd be chaos wouldn't it if we had 230 people in the same room. There's a lot to be said for um, Facebook Live. Right. Warm wishes this Christmas. There we go. So next Thursday at four o'clock, uh, we should be launching the fifth, the fifth and final... So that when you've had a sherry. We should be launching the fifth and final collection of plates. Seven lefties out of 230 will blow me down. That's that makes you feel quite special, doesn't it? Hey? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, next Thursday, four o'clock. Which one are we on now? Right. So I think if we've looked at our plate, we've done all the soft work, let's call it, that we want to do. And then we're going to go back in with our number one tool and we're going to add our, our holly. Okay. I now, the other thing is with holly, because it's got quite a sharp, this is what I found when I was doing this. I'll come down a bit. It's got quite a sharp, um, like prickly bits, right? And if you go too fast, the white, it doesn't work very well. Um, you can lose quite a lot of it if you, if you race. So it's a good idea. If you watch what I'm doing, I'm, I'm flicking into the actual... Because you want it to be nice, don't you? So when as I'm going round, I'm flicking into the the little sharp pieces. Do you see? Like that. So we'll just go round. Like that. There. So we've got our... And this is our... Bit round the outside as well. So now... We've got, see, so you flick into the sharp bits and you'll find that that really defines the holly leaf. There, like that. See, flick, 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 and then down the center. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, next Thursday as well. Right, let me just see what I've got here. Right, that's that piece. That's that, that's that. Um, next Thursday. Oh, I really, I was, I nearly showed you because I can't, I'm terrible at keeping secrets. But we've got this superb, <laughs> really, really excellent, um, like celebration plate as well. Uh, like a, I had an idea and I, I spoke to Linda and she thought it was a good idea too. 
and then she set to and she designed just the most superb um, plates to kind of complement, if you like, this whole beautiful Christmas treasures collection. And when you see the plate, I mean, the thing is, I've got it here, right? I'm not being a tease now. I'm just wondering. I, I really want to show you, okay? I am being a tease now, aren't I? I really want to show you this, this plate because it's so cool. And when you see oh, the artwork that the design team, Carol Baker, she just sent a piece in today. Cool. Oh, you just have to smile. And Linda's done something superb for me to showcase on telly with it as well. So I hope that arrives in time. What would we do without our friends, eh? Huh. So now, do we, do we keep it a secret or do we have a quick peek at it? Come on. Hands up. What do we think? Do I show you so that you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Like I don't know the answer to this. <laughs> oh dear, I do love you. Right. Let's have a look. Hey. We could be here all night, can't we? What's the time? Eight o'clock. Oh, we're gonna be going an hour. Hello. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? There you go. Right now I've done that whole it, that whole line. Hang on, let's just do these these like that. <laughs> Thing is, you've got to do all of it. I can't leap because you can't see. So we've got to do this in actual time. That's okay. We can do this. Now let's while we're in plate, while we're doing this one, let's do our our border as well. That's it. And here. The thing is, it'll only make it'll only emboss where there's lines, where there are lines. Where are those lines? Good God. Um, so it's not like you're going to go cruising through the leaves because there are no lines there. You can't. There you go. I think I've got it all. Mm. God, my hand. Right, come on. Do we want to have a quick look? Could have a little break then. <laughs> Let's have a look. I've got it all. Can always go back. You see, that's the thing. If you missed a bit, can always go back. Come on, let's take a look at what we're doing. Progress. I want to get it nice. Oh yeah. Okay. I've missed a bit up there. Missed a bit over there. Pretty good though. See, and then it just slots back in. Cool. Oh, hello. Slots back in, I said. Famous last words. Right. Get the plate back in there. Relocate. Okay. And stick. There. That bit there is missing. There. Yeah, very relaxing actually. So I know that I've got it all in the right place. Yeah, and I think we're doing all right with our... You can make this as white and bright as you like around the outside just by going back round it like Tina does, you see? You just go twice. But it just slots in anyway, so that's easy enough. So we've got that bit, that bit. Oh. Right, how are we doing here? They're all promising not to tell anyone if you show the new plate. <laughs> I knew it. Right, hang on a minute. Let me just, and that way we can have a bit of a break. Right, stretch, stretch. We've done one side. Done one side, haven't we? Let's have a look. Oh, that's better. Right, where's that new plate? 
Okay, stay there a minute. Have a look at this lovely artwork while I go and find, there you go. Have a look at that while I go and find this new plate. I didn't even have it to hand because I decided against. Hang on. I thought, no. <laughs> but don't forget, we've got the fifth collection, the wonderful collection coming too. And then, right, you ready? Oh, <laughs> we've got um, we've got an A4. This is an advent advent plate, right? With twenty four little scenes, and they're like little tiny snips or um, little clips from each of the sets. So you'll be familiar with them. Let me let me just let me take this out of the way so I can show you. And then what I'll do is I'll I'll pan out so you can see the, the play. I think you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. Right, here we go. Let's pop that to one side. Okay, let's turn it over so you can see it. Look, you see, so you've got look, one, two, the numbers are there if you want to use them as an advent. You can use them as tags. You can use them as tiles. You can use them as as in for boxes. They are so beautiful. They are so beautiful. Um, Paul, I think you got somebody on um, that you need to kick out. Find love on the new dating site. I don't think so, Paul. Um, here we go, look. You see, if you look at them, there are the baubles in miniature. Look at these little dogs. Look at the little, you know, they, those little Westies, they're from the set. Um, I can show you a piece of artwork. If you look here, see the little dog there? There they are. Look, it's a pair of them. Love is in the air. You see? Look, and there's the little tree, a little miniature tree, which is obviously pertaining to the one that we're using at the moment it's so it's this is so lovely and then at the bottom you'll see here we've got these circular wreaths and so you can put these pieces inside it really is quite super you know um and they they just work so so beautifully and they're so interchangeable but if you just look at the you'll you'll recognize as you look at the different, you know, it's a it's a brilliant plate. It's just a brilliant plate. And and when you see the artwork, you know, just small, lovely, bite-sized um, pieces. It's quite something, isn't it? Eh? It's quite something. So uh, so there you go. That's that's what I wanted to show you. And uh, and my brother is busy making these. Um, as many as we possibly can because they're an A4 plate you know they take a long time and you can only make like four an hour on a machine or something so there's a lot of hours involved here to make as many as we think we're going to need yeah so so that's Steve's Steve's busyness at the moment bless him and uh, yeah so I'm glad I showed you that but don't tell anyone it's a secret hey
the it's frozen has it are we back oh what's happened Have we dipped out okay Am I back, Paul? I don't know. Can you speak to me? Ring me, please. Maybe you could call me, because I'm not sure now. Can you see me? Or have I have you have I lost you? Paul, help me out. You are back. Am I? Because I can't see the chat anymore. That seems to have gone. I think maybe when we block that freak, um, that that person. I think that that must have knocked something out. Anyway, that's okay. We're doing it. Paul, yeah, speak to me. Excuse me one moment. You're back. You're back. I'm back, am I? Okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe you could just call Jim and ask him to have a look why why that, why I, my chat's gone. Or should, doesn't matter, does it? Okay, as long as you can see what friends are saying, that's fine. All right, love. Cracking on. Bye. Oh, also, while you're on the phone, can you let me know whether you think I should put, do the whole thing? Um, I would go to the middle part. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Good. All right, we're all on track. Sorry about that. We had an intruder in the chat, which I clocked out of, out of the side view, right? And then we blocked him, and I think that that may have caused a, a commotion. It's all right, though. Yeah. You know, you've got to police these uh, rooms. You do need to police them, and we do. You know we do. I mean, my Grace, our Grace, she is very, very... Um, vigilant you know she's always policing the rooms our our pages and making sure that that things are pleasant and safe you know and i think you know that's that's one of the best things about clarity is that we We're very, very um, switched on when it comes to that stuff, you know. We try to be anyway. Right, here we go. So we're doing the centerpiece. And, and then what we'll do is we'll... Right, let's have a look now. So when you look at what we've got... We've done all of it. We haven't done the, out, the the leaves and the outside, but we can always come back to that, can't we? I, I tell you what I do want to do, though. I just want to go to a logical stop, if you know what I mean. So this is, for example, a logical stop. So I've made a block. So when I'm colouring in that area, the, the block is completely coloured in. Yeah, it's completely coloured in. I haven't got an open area. There you go. That's all done now. So if you're in agreement with this, what I'd like to do, unfortunately, like I say, I can't see the chat anymore, so I don't know what happened there, but it's okay. As long as Paul can see you, that's the main thing. So what I'm going to do now is just remove this from here and let's take a look at what we've got so far okay so you just got to imagine that this is all filled in as well like the top bit but that's plenty to show us how to do the coloring yeah that's that's plenty and there's also plenty there to show us how to do the white work yeah so the first thing we're going to do let's take this out of the way for a minute okay and let's do a little, let's do the berries. That's the first thing we want to do. Now we need a soft mat underneath 
to do the berries. So which soft mat is your preference? Um, you can either use the, the soft side of the black mat, see, so it's hard on one side and then it's soft on the other side, isn't it? So you can use that or you can use your perfect mat, your, your excellent mat, whichever you prefer. I'm going to show you both and then you can decide, you, we can decide. So, for example, if we go, I, I, like, the, I like the soft side of the black mat um, and we're going to just get those berries sorted. Let's have a look. So if we go to the berries, we're just going to come in here and what we can do is use the guard. We've got two different choices. Here we go, look. So you can use the guard now to isolate the area. There's a berry. Right, so you're going to go up, down, left, right, and round. And we're using the number two tool, right? Let me get my glasses, my other glasses on, so I can see better. All the better to see you with. Right, here's another one. We're just going to press into the center. And let's make sure that the berries are round. Right, let's take a look. Do we have to do more than one layer? If you want to, you can. Let's just go in tight so we can see what we're doing. But the black mat, right, is ideal. So you, your traditional parcher would probably argue that you should go in more than once to do this, right? But I, I'm, I'm saying let's just... Put the first layer down. If you want to go in again later, that's fine. Right, so mat over the top, number two tool, and then you just press in the middle and then swivel. <laughs> swivel. <laughs> swivel. Right, press in the center, give a little wiggle. There you go. As long as you press into the center, you won't get a donut, as they call it. See, so we're getting our three. Let's see if it's working. Yeah, of course it's working. See, it's quite nice, isn't it? So let's go again. We'll do the. Well, let's do this. This is easy. N nothing that we're doing this evening is difficult. So we've done the done the pico edging that was quite straightforward with the use of this without this it would be not so easy look all this gold everywhere where on earth did that come from oh no <laughs> right and then we can see if we've got a couple of berries right we can see do the one at the front first and then another one at the front Maybe try and keep the berries separate like that. You can always spread them out a bit afterwards, can't you? Let's have a look. I think this is going to look lovely. There you go, look. Pretty. And the thing to remember is this is a busy busy wreath so or busy frame. So people aren't going to be staring at your... I wonder where all that gold's coming from. <laughs> I wonder. It's always a bit unnerving, isn't it? Right. So did we lose you or are you still with us? Let me just check. I can tell from the... Oh, I've still got 231 people in the room, Paul. So even though we froze, I think our friends must have found us again, eh? Here we go. So this is the black mat working quite well. And I can I, I can put dots, I can put berries where I like. I can make the berries bigger or smaller. Circular. There you go, that's a big berry. See? It's up to you. But you can see, because we, I mean, this is we repeat ourselves almost every time we do this, but because we use the number two tool to show you where the, um, 
the outline is you don't have to fight the the line art to get a really lovely berry see Isn't that pretty really easy couple more and the other thing about this is it's great for practice you know because you can you can do this and you can try it if you press too hard then don't press so hard the next time and if you prefer if you find you well if you punch in the parchment trust me you're pressing too hard and now if you if you are there are a couple of little tricks let me show you just a couple of tricks if you feel too heavy-handed let me just find a piece of plastic i did find a bit earlier here it is right so for example if you're starting out and i'm sure i'm repeating myself but if you take a piece of plastic like a poly bag like this right and you put this underneath so that if you feel you want to use the black mat because you've got the starter kit but it's too heavy you, you're too heavy handed then if you put a poly bag in between the black mat and your work look i'll show you we'll just do some isolated berries here so you understand then when you go in to do your berry right it it works of course it does because you've but you're res that you've put a resist there so it won't press you won't press so hard you see there's not the risk if you take that away it'll be softer and then you this comes with experience you just know how hard to press the other thing is if you want to really outline after not immediately now but if you go in with the stylus, the number one tool, you can really get a sharp outer rim. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, if you really are a heavy handed person when it comes to white work, I find the pink mat is for this sort of thing. These little pieces, the black mat's fine with a poly bag if you need it. But when you're doing larger sky areas or tree areas, sometimes the pink mat works really is, is best only because you'll find it's just super forgiving especially when you're you when you're going in with the number six ball tool and okay it just there you are but you'll find that it's 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 just very easy to use okay so you've got you've got options but let's have a look now where we're at so we you can see straight away it's starting to look really cool you know that's the first thing now, the next thing I wanted to show you, let me show you this trick, okay? Because this is now, let's have a look. If we go to this particular piece of artwork by Glynis, right, we're combining different tricks and tips here. We're going to do the colouring in. We, well, I'm going to show you that as well, okay? We'll do the colouring in. But if you were going to add any accents, like, for example, this kind of thing. There's no colouring in on that one. It's just straightforward two rows of dots, right? That's quite nice, isn't it? See, that looks quite good, doesn't it? It's a difference. It's just a different look. I want to show you this one as well, how this is done. Okay, this is really nice. So if I go in tight on this, you could probably figure it out for yourself. But I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's look here. Just lots of different little tricks and tips. So this one, can you see that? It's going even tighter. I'm going in real tight now. There. So now you can really see there are little boxes of... Now, you can do the traditional thing and you can get a grid, a plain grid that's just a plate with loads of holes, got no patterns. It's just, you can get a diagonal, like offset, and you can get a uh, horizontal, like straight. All right, so you get a straight grid and you can get an offset, a diagonal grid. And then you'd start, then you've got a count now, right? Or you can use um, pre, pre, score you know pre-done for you preconceived patterns so let's have a look at this particular plate here and i'll just show you a couple of tricks i mean we can't can't show you every trick but i can show you a few 
Now let's say, for example, this plate here, all I want is within this pattern, if you can see, do you see the, see the squares here? I'm just going to take them out and I'm going to add them into, right, if you look here, can you see the squares? And I'm putting them in here like that. Let me just do that just to give you a clue of how to add patterns, for example. Let's just put that in there like that. So again, we're going to use our groovy tabs to hold it in place while we're working. So this is a lot easier than count, count, counting. All right. Put that one in there. Just move this along a little tiny bit. Position is everything with this. Okay, that'll do. So I'm just going to show you one row because it's so nice to do as well. And again, you know, this is this is where you you kind of you're using this piece of artwork now not to make a finished piece, but to try different tricks out. So let's take this artwork now. And we're going to use the number two ball tool and we're just going to make these little blocks of four. Let's do that. Let's make these little box blocks of four. See, the thing about the grid plate, mate, is it's got so many different pre-done patterns for you and it takes the thinking out of it because you just got to find what fits, what you like, and then start building off the back of that. And I want to show you, though, a really super trick, right? So now I've gone along and I've put the pattern. I could go down, along, and so on and so on, right? Of course I can. Let's just take, for example, that pattern to... So when we turn it over, you can see we've got the dots in there. So we've got to do this before we colour in because otherwise, well, it's just easier to, to see what you're doing before you add colour, okay? Colour afterwards, I would suggest. Right, so let's have a look at this. So that looks nice, just like that. And if you look at all the different possibilities, it, they're endless, right? So, so you could, I could go all the way around with this one here. But now comes the, another little trick. If I have a look, another look at Frances, you see how she's crossed over? They're all joined up, aren't they? So I've used a different layout of dots. She's used a trad grid, I would say, and counted. I think that this is an easier option. So let's take this now. We'll turn this over. And what, what you need now is a, let me just, what you're going to need now to do the job is a soft mat. So I would suggest you either use the black one with this or the pink. This is where the pink one comes in really handy. Okay, so put the pink mat down right? It's good. It's, it's a, it's a, you've got to have quite a fine hand for this, but it works. And then you need, where are my bits? Right. A one needle, use a one needle bold tool. Have you got one of those? A one needle bold tool, that one. Okay. And um, get your eye in. No, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So what we're actually doing, we're not crossing in between the little fours that we did. We're straddling across there. So, for example, now, let me get my, where's my, on that. That gold worries me a bit, people. <laughs> where, have I, where have I picked it up? Well, the good news is, let me just lean across. I do have a clean one. Here's one I used earlier. I'll get rid of that gold one. I just keep looking at myself thinking, where am I covered in it? Ah. Right, you ready? So what we're going to do is isolate the area like that. And then you're going to oh, take a piece of scrap just so that you 
Hang on, let me just get a bit of to show you. Right, try it on a bit of like this. And what you're going to do is just pull. No, I'll show you. You're just going to pull like that. You drag, you drag, you drag. If you press too hard, it's not bad with the pink mat. See, even if you press hard, it's not too bad. See, and then you go that way. Then what you're going to do is go that way. When you turn it over, of course, you've got lines. It's obvious, isn't it? So what we're going to do is join up the dots. Join up the dots. Right, ready? So let me get my right glasses on. I've got to go quiet now. Drum roll. Right. And you're going to go from that dot to there. And that dot to there to there. Straight line. And what you're trying to do is drag it. Hang on. Drag it. Is that good? So let's just stay with the same line. So I'm getting my eye in. Right, lift up, come back down. And it's just a neat way of joining up. So now I'll turn it round, right? And now I'm going to come back the other way. So now I'm going to come across and across. So rather than actually joining up, you would think that you'd be doing this bit, which also looks really nice. Don't get me wrong. We could try that as well. So you drag that number one bold tool and you scratch. You literally scratch. Okay. Like that. And then across like that. So when you turn it over, cool pattern. See, isn't that pretty? So you've got choices, choices, choices. And it doesn't have to be the same pattern all the way around. Or you could do it just at the top and just at the sides. And don't worry about these bits. Or you could do what, you see, what um, Frances has done. She's gone all the way around. You could do just two rows of dots. They're easy to find. You go back in here and you just look for, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a row of dots. So just look for double dots. There'll be a row of double dots somewhere. Double dots. Might have to make a double dot line. But you see what I mean. It's very easy to do. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's a double dots in there. Yeah. Anyway, I love it. I like this look. And when you do this, uh, you often see... Um, like uh, scallop shells, you know, when you do a scallop and then they they bring in like five lines like that. This is exactly how it's done. OK, working from the back with a one needle tool and then you just join the dots. <laughs> That's it. Join the dots. OK, so that was that trick. Good. Lid on. Health and safety. Nice pattern. Very nice pattern. Right. So now we've done that. Take that away. And now let's have a look at the colouring in. Should we do the colouring in? Because that's a that's an interesting one. Let's just do a little bit of colouring in so you know how that works. And then we'll take it for, and then we'll move on to the gold. How does that sound? Right. So next next thing, let's come in here and let's move out a little bit so we can see what we're at. And what we want to do now is take a look at adding some colour in the background. Let's just do the little bit of colour around here and then to show you how to smooth out the area behind the tree, for example. Yeah? You can see on both. See, what's interesting is that this is cut separately. This is actually applied, whereas this is all one layer. Okay? So there's a lot more depth on that one. But let's have a look here. We're going to colour in from the back. So you turn around on the back and we're going to use... Now, what pens? What pens have we got? What pencils? All right, these are the two colours that um, Glynis used. 
pergo liners, number 11, which is the red one, B pencil, and number 15, which is the lovely olivey green colour. I like that one. Let's have a look. So if, for example, we want to do the leaves, the, the leaves, then that's quite straightforward. We're just going to colour in. Where is my mat? Because it's like that. Okay, so we can just, working from the back, we can just add some colour in, right? So this is quite straightforward. And the white will always prevail. So even if you go over the top of the, the, the line in the leaf, it won't matter. Look, I can go straight over the top. I can, I don't, it's very forgiving. <sighs> okay, I've missed the line there. Okay, can see it now. Right, so when I turn this over, let's just put this on there. You can see where I'm colouring it in quite easily, can't you? So, so the leaves are quite straightforward. You can just colour them straight in like this. Easy. Now, when we when we go to do the missed a bit there, don't matter. That'll do. Um, when we do the border itself, see, it's quite, looks quite primitive when you do it like this, but it'll work. So the green's going in for sure. There are other colours. I mean, we've got perga colours as well. I'm using the pencils, the B pencils, but the perga colours as well. For these sort of smaller areas, just a green felt tip would get in nicely too. Lots of different choices. And then, of course, you've also got your polychromos. If you if you want, there are different, loads of different colours, you see. So you can use polychromos. They, they're the same type of pencil. So I'm hoping that you can see the, the greens running through here. Now, let's before we use any oil... Let's take our red pencil now and let's put the red in the background. Yeah, we'll do the red in the background. Oh, or let's also let's put a bit of green in the background too. So along the, this edge here, right, let's just take a bit of green. We're on the back and you can see you don't have to press too hard, but just add a bit of the pigment across the back now. There you go. Try and stay in the area that you're colouring in. There you go. So this is going to be the green outer border. This one. But like I say, if I was going to put any light, like dotted lines in, I would probably be doing that first before I did the colouring. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't read the rule book, friends. That's just my logical mind at work. Right? So that's how you do the, the outer edge. Let's just leave that now, like that now. <sighs> okay. Now, when you turn that over, you can see it's quite, it's quite light and it's quite textured because, obviously, pencils, you get that texture. So we've done that. Let's go to the red. Yeah, let's go to the red. And let's add a red line in here, too. So the red is quite dark. So we're just going to come in here and let's add a bit of red into this area where we want to colour in. Just add a bit of pigment. That's it. Just light, lightly through there. There you go. Nice. And what we'll do is put a bit of red in there. Yeah. And then we'll see what we can do to smooth this out. Right, so that's red. We'll turn it over. Looks a bit ropey, I know. We haven't finished yet. Add a bit of red. I wonder if we add a bit more. We ought to do a layer at a time, really. But again, it's about practicing. Okay. Let's add a bit more pigment and then we'll see. 
when you move it with oil, it, you, when you start to blend it, it comes, it's quite, it changes considerably. So let's do this bit here and let's see, because we're going to put a bit of, should we put a bit of green on that or should we try a bit of red? Let's have a look. Let's try a bit of um, green just to see. Well, now let's go, yeah, let's go green. Stick to Glynis's. So we're going to go over the top, see? Run over the top like that. Hmm. This will be good. So what we're going to do now is change this, because this looks quite gritty at the moment. So we've got a kit. Let's have a look. We've got a kit, and it's called a dorse, it's called a, a colouring kit. And what it includes is your dorso oil, which is what we're going to use now. It includes a dorso oil, the spot-on sponges, and the mix mats. Now, the mix mat is what we're going to be using down the road in a minute, when we're, oh, I've got loads of them. I've always got mix mats on the go because I use them to blend. Well, that's why they're called mix mats because you, you, you mix your colours on them. Let me just find you one. There's an oil one. Look, see, I've always got some on the go. There's another oil one. When you buy them, you get an oil one and a water one. They're the same mat, but we just put stickers on them so that you know that one's for oil and that one's for water. So let's use, we don't need that at the moment though. That's when you're using your dorso, your crayons and that. Or for example, if you wanted to change the color of a pencil. So say for example, you see the blending, this is not water soluble, but it is uh, oil soluble, right? So if for example, I put that in there and then let's say I want an orange, but I haven't got the orange that I want in my, I know I'm digressing, but I'm just explaining something. So then I take my yellow from here, right, because obviously you've only got 16 blending pencils in this pergolina box. So let's say I put a bit of yellow down there too, right? So then if I add a bit of oil, my dorso oil, let me show you. If I add a bit of just a, oh, that's a bit strong, Barbara, right, but that's okay. It, I need a bit to show you. Let me just take a bit of the dorso oil and then if I start to see I move the two together all of a sudden you get in different colors do you see how the yellow and the yellow and the red they blend and you get a beautiful there you go so now I've got a really lovely orange where what was yellow and now I've got a, a really lovely orange and if I were to take a piece of to color in right what you'll see is that you've got an orange that you didn't have before let me just thin it out a little bit there you go see so I'm just saying that that's a really brilliant way of mixing colors that you don't necessarily have, but you but you want, okay? So that's what the blending mat is for, the mix mat, I mean. And that comes in a set, so I'll put that to one side for a minute. I just want, and these nibs, they you, you use them again and again and again. They That's not just a one-use nib. They are brilliant for this kind of thing. But if I, if I take, now, if I take this, let me just take this color, right? And I'm gonna use, my dorso oil on there like that and then I'm going to use a let me use a clean nib this nib is a I've got a box of them that I like a jar of them and I just put them in there and then you just use them you know you just got your colors to to work towards I've got a bit of green on this so this is my green one so I put a bit in there and then what you'll see is when you when you start to blend over the top let me come in tight so you can see this because it makes such a difference. Right. You'll see when you go in with your, your nib, with your blending nib. Right, here we go. Right, so you just go circular motions and you go up to the edge and you can get in. So your granular sort of colouring 
becomes really, really smooth, like printed. And you're working on the back. There you go. And then if you, if you use too much dorsal oil, what happens is, but let me turn it round so you can see it. If I put it on the back of there, see the difference between the dry and the and the dorsed area. It's it makes a massive difference to colouring. And this is this works for pergolina pencils, the pergolina B pencils, and all your polychromos. So if you did treat yourself to a tin of polychromos, Faber Castell, this oil is what works for that right so you can see how instantly it changes if you put too much on it lifts the color off as well which is not so great right but you can see how easily and the other thing is that when you um when you've done it when this is dry if I wanted to darken the green and intensify the green, then I could do that too. And the way that I blended the red and the yellow just now, right, I can do that on the actual parchment too if I want to. I can blend colours on the parchment too, which is rather nice. Right, let's see. So this looks good. There we are. Parchment is a fantastic medium, really. It's such a fantastic surface to work with. I think one of the reasons I really like the design of parchment as well is because it it's so it's such a deluxe kind of paper, really. I mean it's parchment paper, but because you've got the because it's only flooded with colour on one side, and because you, you can actually erase it, you can take it away. It's, it's got so many different excellent properties, N not just for parchers, I mean for paper crafters too, really. Right, so now you can see that that makes such a difference, you know. Let's try the red. So I'll take my, I wonder if that nib's too saturated, the one that I just, I think it might be a little bit too wet. Let's try it. Ah. The one that I did that was orange, it's quite quite juicy. There you go. See, and then you can get in and there. So I'm changing the colour a little bit, and I'm going as well. Rather nice. But look at the difference where you go with the quite something really. And if you go over the white, it shouldn't matter at all. Famous last words. I mean, I'm not going to deliberately fly over the white, but I bet you could. Quite a difference, isn't it? Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, yeah. Hey, look at that. So why wouldn't you use Dorso oil, eh? And it's good if you could just put it on the on the spot on sponge and then you can use that again and again. It's not like, because you can get rid of the excess on it. Look, right, if you, if you think you've got too much on there, you just dip it off. And the oily, the oily nibs you can use again and again. So you just keep them in a little, little pot together, really. There you go. So all you're doing is kind of distributing the pigment with the oil. But like I say, once it's dry, you can go back in if you choose to, and you can add another layer of colour easily. Or, for example, if you wanted to smooth out, I wonder if, you know, because the leaves were a little bit, you couldn't, they weren't that well defined, were they, the leaves, with the, with the dry, right? Let's just see if it looks better. 
let's just try it. And then once we've done that, I think we can move on to the, the gold. What do you think? Should we have a go at the gold? Let's turn it over and have a look. I like it a lot. So I'm missing a little bit up there. So I wonder, did I just miss it all together? Let's just run over that like that and see if it's more defined if I do that. Have a look. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So you get that, you get how that works. It's very nice. You know how we make the marks now. Now what happens, because we haven't, we haven't, um, dorsed the bit behind these colour yet, have we? Let's see what happens if we do that. Let's go in here. So I'm going over the embossed lines now, and I want to see if we lose any of the detail. Let's see. You know, if the white disappears, I shouldn't think it would, but I might eat my words here. Let's have a look. Mm hmm. Paul says that you weren't feeling very well, Karen, at the beginning of the session, but you're feeling a bit better now. Well, I'm glad to hear it. To be honest, the reason I went and had a lie down was because I didn't feel very well. And now I feel great. See? Which all goes to show that this too shall pass, you know? It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Let's see. See, I quite like it when it, go, when it fades like that. You can do that with the oil. Right, just keep until it disappears. Let's see if this worked. <laughs> yeah, of course it did. She knew it would. Right, so so you can see how you could get super smooth dorsed effect. Nice, 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 nice. And then, of course, with the tree, same sketch. And you would certainly, with the tree, it's got to be, you're going to put more... Let's have it right. I want to show you the tree as well because um, it's a slightly, it's a different way of right on the back. We've got to do this because we want to do the gold and we want to be able to see it really, don't we? So we're on the back and we're using the green pen, so pencil, just to put some color down. Don't rush it, gray. Come on. But I just want to show you. Because remember, we were we were going to see, weren't we? Which core cool, you can definitely see where I've used the number four tool or the number three tool. Because I can't even see the dots here. That's going to be interesting. I wonder if I'm covering them up. No, <laughs> no. So we're going to add some colour here. Right, just do this, put it down, and then we'll see. Because Oh, have you got a tissue handy? Have you got a tissue handy, friends? Because I think we're going to use a tissue for this large area. I think it will work better than mm, what we're doing here. Okay, a bit of green in there as well. Right, so we want to get kind of a haze of green on the tree. Hmm? Let's get a bit of green going. Right. So on a larger area like that. That'll do for a minute. Looks a bit ropey, but it'll be all right. <laughs> right. So we've got that like that. So you can see better. What do you think? You can see better with that underneath, can't you? Right, next stop. So now we need a tissue. Avez-vous un mouchoir, I think it's called, handkerchief. Right, so what we're going to do is fold it into like that and then fold it into a quarter and then fold it again and then fold it again. So you've got yourself a little tiny, right, and now let's have a look. So now you've got this, right? Now you can you can turn it like 
that. So what you've what you've done in effect is you've given yourself like a really sharp point. You see, it's like a nib, but it's bigger than a nib. There you go. And then what we're going to do, right, hold that thought for a minute. Then we're going to take some dorso oil again. I'm just going to add a bit more to me. Let me add a bit more to there, right? Got some on there and some on there. That'll do. Right, pop that there. And this is just a way to add oil to a larger area like this. Let's pan out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Right now. So what we'll do is we put some dorso oil on there. And then we're going to use the, the nib like that. And we're going to use just, look, the tip like that. And you're just going to come round and smooth with the tissue. This is what Parchers did in a world before our blending pens. Because we introduced those actually when we when we took over Pergamana, when we bought Pergamana. There you go. It's cool, isn't it? A lot faster anyway. See? If you want a bit more, go in and get some more oil. And then round you go and you just smooth it through. Can you see what a difference this makes? Yeah, nice, eh? There you are. And if you go over the edge and you think, oh, I don't, I'm not keen on that area, then when it's dry, you can go in with an eraser pencil and just take it out. It does come away nicely. But I don't think there's, I don't think, I don't think it's, this is a light enough, a forgiving enough colour. You don't have to worry. See? How's that? So now you can really see here where we've used the number two, the number two tool on the dots there, the number three tool here, and then the number four tool there. So it'd be interesting to see how that changes, won't it? And you see on the tip of the tree, I'm not too impressed. I didn't, this is where the, the, the nib comes into its own. See, because the nib can get much tighter. See, you can get a much more defined tree tip there, like that. See, so the areas where you want to really, if you want to get into those areas nicely, you can always go back afterwards. So you turn that over, rocking, hey? Very good. So now let me see. We've got, there are two more things I want to show you. It's nine o'clock. Are you ready to try the gold and the, yeah, should we do the gold? Should we do that next? I think so too. I think so too. And I don't think I need a break. Do you need a break? Remove the parchment from underneath your artwork and you might see the faded dots better. Okay. There you go. You're right, Paul. There, there you are. So that's what we're working at now, right? And you can see two. So the only things that we, we, the tricks I wanted to show you were also, I wanted to show you the, um, the stippled star. Do you remember the stippled star? Right now, that's a two minute job. So let's do that one quickly, please. Yeah. So before we do the stippling, what we're going to do is take, let's just take a really light, light approach to this. And what we'll do is with a number four tool, we'll just lightly, lightly add a little bit of white work. Just gives it a start. You can add white work, right? Just, there you go. Very, very lightly. Not too much, but it just gives it a little bit of a start on the back. Okay. Good start. Right, so we've done that. Sorted. Now, where's that one needle bowl tool again? You know the one that we used for 
scratching this. It's such a useful tool, really. Right, let's take that away. Stippling. We'll stipple that. So now what you're going to do is get a bit of cardboard like I've got and do this is like the Sharpie pen on the back. So you can pop that under there like so. OK, and then we're going to stipple. Stipple. And we're going to stip. The thing is, before you start stippling, right, because when you go, when you stipple, you go like that. And when you're stippling, right, you can't colour in after you've stippled. So you need to, you sort, because you're going to dis disturb the, the, see, so when you start stippling, work from the front. Let me just put my glasses on again. Right. And now we're going to stipple. And you're going to stipple into this area. Right, I'm, I've got you on the different camera now, so you should be able to see this okay. And you don't have to go fast. You can go slowly too. But you see, you're holding the pen perpendicular, like at a, at a straight angle, a 90-degree angle. And then all you're doing, I'll tell you what would be useful. Let's put this over there like that. Right, that holds it all in place while I'm doing my stippling. And then you can go, and you can go around the outside so you can frame it nicely. And it just adds a really nice texture to the star. There we go. So this is done with stippling, see, like that. So when we lift this off, you can see it's got a really nice stippled effect. Okay. And on the front, it's smooth. And on the back, it's it's granular, you see? So if you want the granular on the front, if you want that look, then you stipple on the back, right? You stipple on the back, and then you've got the granular on the front. So it's entirely up to you. But either way, that's stippling for you. Okay. On the front, it looks really smooth now. But if you wanted to, you could you could stipple from the back and then you'll get more like um I'll show you on the back it looks it's it's grittier. So I think it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. It's something that I always I never know is it that way round or that way round, but I think it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. It depends entirely the look you want, you know? And you know if you want to you've got that, you know you've got control, you can, you can actually out, give a bit of outline as well. That number one tool is really, really cool. So if you wanted to really get really cool points on your star, you so can. Okay, there you go. Who says? So now, lid on elf and safety we've done the stippling the next thing we want to do is the gold work so this is something different so let's just stop for a minute and let's just have a think right a little sip of cold tea and then we'll do some gold work and the gold work it there are lots of different ways to do this i think there are possibilities i spent the best part of the afternoon experimenting looking at different ways and in the end, I came back to um, what I what I would have done on paper as a calligrapher. So, what we're going to do is just have a look at what we need and take it from there. So, the first thing I'm going to use, let's get, I've got my little set here, and I'm going to use my gold my gold powder. Let's pan out a little bit. Right, so I'm going to use my, my perfect pearls. 
I've got some paint brushes and a bit of this and a bit of that. I've I've got a mix mat, which is really key. I need my mix mat. And I need um, a, a calligraphy pen, a clean calligraphy pen. Okay. I also, I've got a tissue there. I've got a water brush. Um, I've got a large paintbrush and the really fine so now these are these are expensive brushes this is a, a, a sable hair weasel right these are weasel brushes this is a this is also a weasel brush the pergamana number no. two really really top quality brushes and what i'm going to do is use a bit of water as well right i don't need as much water as that so i'm going to drink this i'll do Right, so I've got a little bit of water in there. It was clean water, that's okay. But I want to show you now how, how we're gonna do the writing and do the dots, okay? So I've got, I've got one here that I can practice on. Right? I've got a piece of scrap. So should you have a piece to try on, okay? You cool with this? Let's give it a go. Right, now the first thing we need to do is get, put the artwork somewhere safe and get your mix mat. And then we're going to get our perfect pearls out. And we'll just take the lid off and we'll use a dry brush. Let's make sure we've got a dry brush. That's a good dry brush. And we're, gonna, we're going to shovel a goodly amount of... mica powder right the per i love the perfect pearls they, they first of all they've got a really beautiful luster and secondly they've got a built-in fixative so that means that once it's set it's set especially on on like glossy card or right it, it you don't need to seal it okay so that's my dry brush, right? And I've done that. Now I need a bit of water. So I'm going to mix. What I'm doing here is, in effect, I'm mixing a really nice ink. Okay. It's like the consistency is the key. If it's too, if it's too runny, then it will flood into your artwork. If it's if it's too thick, it won't move. So there is a point and it's like um, you'll know, you'll know by looking at it, you'll know whether it's too runny or not. So what you're going to do, though, is you've got I've got water in this water brush and I'm going to put my water away like away from the gold. I'm not going to pop it. See, I was practicing earlier. So I've already got some. It's this should be clear water, but it's the same thing. And what I'm going to do now is move that in. Right, I'm moving it in to the to the mica powder, and I'm giving myself. It's all about the water, and as you're working, you'll see that the water also. Don't forget, you've got water in here, so you just have to press lightly, and you'll get more water coming through. This is quite runny here, isn't it? This is quite thick, and you'll see as you do this. Do you want a bit more water? Bring it in from over there. Right, squeeze a tiny bit. I just don't want to over egg it because then you'll you'll have to thicken it up again. It's like it's like gravy. You don't want it too runny, but you'll know it's a bit bit thicker than that, a bit thinner than that. I mean, sorry. So you're you're creating an ink, if you like, a bottled ink. Have a look. So we've got a thinner one at the bottom there. That's good to have. So we can test it. I'm squeezing just slightly just to get some water going again. Right. Now, I reckon that that's a good consistency. Right. And I've brought it all in like a Yorkshire pud, like powder. Right. I've got that going and I've got a lot of ink on here. And that's there's a key there. That's that's a key. Because I'm going. This is what I use to load my. See, it's so easy. 
This, the water brushes, the reason we put them in with the mix mats, more will be revealed. So this now, for example, is my applicator. See, if I use this, I can load my, I can load my mapping pen. You see that? You load your mapping pen like that. If it's too thick, it won't come out. So all you've got to do now is just use a bit of scrap first and let's see. Let's see, let it come, let it start coming. Right, and when it starts to come, if it's too thick, then it just it won't it won't run. See, so then you squeeze a bit more water. Let's go again. Let's see. Let's go again. Right. Once you've got the right consistency, you're off and running. But it has to be right, and then it will run. There you go. So now, for example, I've got my, my pen loaded. I remember watching a calligrapher once. Here we go, look. And I remember hearing him scratching and thinking, what? But that's how it works. Okay? And you can get the finest lines, but it has to be the right consistency for it to work. So there are lots of different possibilities. But the whole, the whole thing here, right, this is, the, this is how easy it is. It's a, a steady hand, a bit of practice. The more you do, the better you get. The steadier you get, the more confident you get, and the more you'll want to do it. The dots are uh, an, a really great starting point, right, because it's literally dot, we'll, we'll do the dots. And then when you get to do the writing, do we want a bit of practice first? But it's all it, the most important thing is that you load your calligraphy. You keep the, the consistency right because it will start to dry. You know, as you're working, this will start to dry. And when that happens, you, you that's why it's a water brush. You just squeeze. You don't pour water into it. Just wet the. Wet the brush, rejuvenate, reload. Now, what will happen over time as well, you can see, can't you, what I've got here. What will happen over time as well, see, when you press, then it will come in, and then you can start to write, and you can, you can continue to write, and it continues to go with you. See, look. You can get the finest lines. If you want to go fatter, then you press harder. So, for example, now I press harder, I press lighter. I want to press harder, lighter, harder, harder. Do you see? Harder, lighter. I mean, I'm no calligrapher. But once you get the consistency right, you can start to practice. Now, I'm just going freehand here, right? So I'm just writing with gold. If I go straight in there, I'm not loading my, my brush, my, my nib. My... The other thing that I think is worth mentioning is that mica powder, over time, it will start to clog your nib up. I noticed this this afternoon. And, and so the trick is to, you know, I had a bit of water. And what you do is you just, every now and again, if, the, if it starts to struggle, all you do is clean the nib. Look, that's it. Just clean the nib. Get rid of the mica powder, the, 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 the ink that you've, you've created, the paste, if you like. And then I've just taken a cloth or a tissue, right? Clean it, dry it off, and start again. And then that way, so now, but this is completely lovely loaded, right? So I've got that, and then I, I load it up again. So, so that's the first thing that I want to show you. Now, the next thing is, let me just pop that to one side for a minute. Because then I was thinking, right, so, so I've, got the, I've got the nibs. We can do the dots. Let's, let's talk the theory through. So then the next thing I was thinking was, right, that's, that's brilliant. Got that. Nailed that. How do I write with it and use the plates? So this is where... You use the pattern and you really lightly, right? We've got choices here. 
the stamper is got another has got another idea too but say for example on our on our work here we used do you remember i used really really lightly i used like the number three didn't i just to give myself the words to write over step one right and then the other thing that i was thinking the stamper in me right i thought because we got like the most beautiful stamps mm -hmm. Because it's a white plate, you have to give yourself the pattern, right? But let's say, for example, I stamp well, like these lovely, look, this is beautiful writing, isn't it? Like really, really nice. If I stamp it in black and then I, I've got that underneath, right, then I can do the, exactly the same thing. This is quite uh, advanced, really, right? But I can go in here now. If it starts to get a bit thick, I can always, let's see, let me just show you how we can, like, let's do Happy New Year. Let's do, well, let's do Merry Christmas. I did it before and it came out really lovely. Right. So, you see, so let me get my glass. What glass have I got? I definitely want my, what, what, what you should also do is probably tape it down while you're working, Gray. Right. But let me just show you. So now I can come in here and I can use the template around the outside, right? But, and you just take your time. You need a smooth hand. You need a steady hand for this one. Right, a bit joggy. Like that. Come down again. See, the thing about the gold, using the gold like this, the mica powder, it just has got the most fantastic. Right, and then you'll soon know if you need to reload. So you come round, go down, like that. Here we are. So as you come round, you see you can go back. You can do two lines, you can do thin. And then as you come round, up you go. So you've got that really thin line as well. I don't know if I want to go back over that. So you can do double lines. So cool. Look, watch. Outside. Outside. See? So when you, let me just show you, when you move it away from the black, Right, you're getting your baseline down. It's nearly empty now, so it's time to reload. But I just want to show you because I did, I did actually. Um, here we are. I put a bit of black behind it. You can see it better, right? But there's the, there's the one that I did earlier. That is one I did earlier. So it's not bad for a first time. Look, and it's proper lovely gold luster. That's the one that I've just done. And you can see how I'm going like uh, two lines rather than infill. I'm doing double lines, which is a really, it, it's a nice way to go as well. Look, so you can do solid. That was a bit wobbly. So I'm just showing you, because I know a lot of you are stampers. If you're wondering, you know, it's so cool. That's why I got lost in it this afternoon. I spent the entire time, look, I was just, look, let me show you. And then we'll, and then we'll, we'll go to the, we'll have a look. Look, Noel, look, really nice. And this is where it gets interesting. See, look, Christmas. So this is where I started using the plates. This is interesting. Look, right, Bodge, that was the first one I did. And do you know why that happened? Because I was using an old nib. And this isn't me trying to get you to, to buy nibs. But I was using an old nib. And I thought, no way is that good enough. Because that looks shocking. I was using it too watery. And I was using an old nib. And I thought, right, cut. <laughs> and then I, um, I remixed my, my mica paste right, my, my ink, let's call it ink, and then I treated myself to a new nib because, that I'll show you, that's why one's missing in the pack. Look, see, because we sell them in packs of 12 like this, right, and I've treated myself to a new nib. 
and hallelujah. What a difference. What a difference a new nib made. Mm. And another thing I noticed was, and here's, here's the answer to the good person who at the beginning of the session was talking about the glitter and said it was going on really thick. Mm? Well, if you get a nib, if you use a calligraphy pen to apply the ink and you're using an old gunked up sticky inky nib, then you will, you will get a, a thick line. If you use a new nib, you will see a massive difference. And the other thing was, if you use isopropyl alcohol cleaner to clean the nib, wh when you use sticky ink, if you leave it on the nib and then you go back in with your sticky ink nib, it builds up on your nib and it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And then <coughs> all of a sudden your glitter is getting thicker and thicker and thicker. <coughs> However, if you clean your nib, <laughs> if you clean your nib, hang on. Right, where were we? I didn't want to cough into the microphone. You'll be like, oh my God, what's happening there? If you clean your nib with isopropyl alcohol or blending solution, the range of stuff, but isopropyl alcohol is cheap as chips on Amazon. Okay, you buy a litre of it and you just put it on a bit of clean and you clean the nib. You will see a marked difference between using a gunky old nib all the time. Yeah, clean the nib, use a new nib, big difference. So now let's have a look at all my other findings. Let's take a look here. So these are just the theory. So here, for example, was a tag and this one, and then we'll do the job. This one was there, right? Okay, so on that one, I used the number one all the way around. Hold on, that way around. And then I went in with my uh, with my calligraphy pen and the, and the mica gold, and look at that, perfect. And it's got a white outline. On this one, I thought, right, so what about if I don't want a white outline? I want it to look like just a gold edge without the white outline. Well, you know what I did? You can see, because I only half did it. I used the number three ball tool and the number four ball tool to give myself a guide where to go. There you go. And that's pretty cool too. Just choices, choices, differences. Okay. You can see I got carried away today, can't you? Anyway, so I just wanted to show you the theory, okay, and now we'll have a look. Is this, is this, are you drinking out of a mug you made? No, I'm not. I'm drinking out of a mug that uh, I bought from a really lovely potter in Lyme Regis. Yeah, I aspire to make mugs like this. This is not easy. He's a production potter really nice guy and i know what his name is his name is harry and the reason i know his name is harry because on his business card it said harry potter <laughs> i'm serious harry potter isn't that great <laughs> i've got another one for you this is this is so interesting my brother went to get his um his jab booster jab and he had to go this was yesterday and he had to go to Caterham, which is quite away from here, to get his booster jab. So off he went. And he said he was sitting in the waiting room. This bloke came in. Steve looked at him. He thought, he said, do I know you? Steve said to this chap, do I know you? The guy smiled at him. Steve looked at him and he kept thinking, I know the face. I know the face. I know the face. And then he went, are you Mr. Cox? And it was... Brian Cox, the bloke laughed and he said, yes, I am. And, he, and it was Professor Brian Cox. And that's why Steve, so Steve got to have the best conversation with Mr. Brian, Professor Brian Cox. He said, he was a really nice bloke. And they, they fist pumped and Steve told him that, you know, when dad was able, he used to watch him avidly. He was his number one fan. Isn't that a small world? Yeah. So there was Brian Cox 
at Caterham getting a booster jab. And my dad and, and my brother met him, which I thought was rather uplifting. That was a good story. There you go. I don't know why I told you that, but there, it's interesting, isn't it? Right, come on. So we've got our paste. We've got our, now we need our artwork. We're going to do the dots first. Should we do the dots? Come on then. So I need to get my, my calligraphy pen ready, right? I'm going to get my calligraphy pen ready. I'm going to make sure, see how that is starting to dry? Right, so it's starting to dry. You can see that. So I'm going to have to rejuvenate it. Here we go. So I'll rejuvenate it. There's plenty here, you know. There's plenty here. This is going to be so cool. Right, get that going again. Yeah. Right, now this is going to load my calligraphy pen. Right, here we go. So I'll load that. Just like that. Don't overload it. That's good to go. Right, now, I've got my scrap here as well, just to get it going. Make sure that we're loaded. Right. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I've got my, I've got, I'm ready to go. Now I want to make dots. So this one, the dots are quite hard. See, they're, they're, they're really pronounced because I used the number too tall, right? So, they're, so I'm just showing you. I, I'm sitting on the top of the white dot and I'm, I'm just adding. So there you go. Get it going and then go round. Go into the center and then go round. Right, so that works really nicely, but I'm going to go to the one that we were working on, this one, because, right, I need this. I've got a feeling this isn't quite, I need it to be a bit, let's have a look, get that going. Come on, Gray, don't let me down now. Right, so I've got that, I've got my tester. Okay. Right, now let's have a go. So I'm going to start at the top and then I'll make my dot. Then I'll go again and I'll make my dot. Right, so once you realise, you just push down, release, and then a little circular motion. Push down, release, and a little circular motion. Let me come in a bit closer so you can see this. Right, this will work nicely. Watch. Am I on the page? I don't want to lose me. Right, so like that, and then a circular motion. And you take each dot as an individual dot. There you go. Press, and then circle. Press, and then circle. So these are actually quite raised because I used the number two tool to do them. Let's just have a look up close to see. Let's do a few more like this. Because I'm sure that this is what you want to learn. I know this is what I wanted to figure out. See, so now, look, my brush is, my, my nib is starting to empty out. So I'm going to, a bit more ink, I'll reload it. There you go. That's the key, is to have that dispenser so that you're not... You're not dipping your nib straight into the... You've got much, much, much more control, friends, if you do it like this. There you go. So, so that's... Let's have a look. If we go to that camera, let's see. If we come in on that camera, let's see. Just let it focus. Let's see if we can see that gold. Right, can you see the gold dots? Yes, you can, can't you? They're not quite dry yet, but they're perfect. You got it? Now, don't take too long either, this. So, if we go around here, right. So press and swivel and press and rotate. There you go. So really fine as well. 
right? That's the thing about using the mapping pen, the calligraphy nib. Look, really, really fine. See if you can see. Are we back? Are we back? Are we frozen? Paul? Hello, Paul? Oh, yeah, it's frozen again. Oh, you're back. Okay. okay just come back. Okay. All right. Cheers. Right. We keep freezing, but that's okay. I think we're going to get there this time. Right. Can you see that? It looks so nice. So now that is where we use the number three tool. So the, so my, my theory is working. If you, for example, if you use a larger ball tool to map out your dots like this or your shapes, then you're, you're, it's easier because there's less of a mound to, you know, to, to, so this was number two, this is number three. Now let's look at the number four area. Put my other glasses on again. I do apologize for the loss of signal. We'll have to work on that. Now, let's have a look what happens if we use. Now we're using the area where we had a number four. Can you see this? It's absolutely so easy to do. Provided you've got a dot or some description to cover. See, because you haven't got the... Oh, this is so nice. Okay, so there's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. If you use the number four tool, right? Look. It really, let me stand up to show you. Let me see if you can see that. It's so easy. There we are. There, now you can see it. Really, really perfect, okay? So works, works better, works best. That's that answered. Right, and now we're going for the words. Are you ready to try the words? Okay. So now, let's have a go. We ought to probably... Ah, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to clean my nib because I want a clean nib to start with. Let's give myself a running chance here. So clean nib in the water, microfiber cloth to get rid of all the 
the mica powder, right? Right, we've got that going. Going to use this. Right, I think it's a bit thick. Let's not spoil it now, Gray. Right, I'm just thin. I'm just rejuvenating the paste again. You know, this is a very inexpensive way. I'm telling you, this is a very inexpensive way of um, of using gold. So, so you know, I do pottery. So I decided, <laughs> in my wisdom, to um, to get for Christmas. I thought, oh yeah, that'd be lovely. So I bought some gold luster, gold luster, a bottle. I'm not kidding you. The bottle is half the size of that, half of that, not even. And there's only there's only about half an inch of this gold luster in the bottle that's half the size, right? How much do you think? I know. I was like, <laughs> 56 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I know, addicted or what? So if you get anything from me, for pottery now, and it's got gold luster on it, I'm telling you, it's worth a fortune. <laughs> I know, that was a staggering amount of money. But there you go, needs must. Because what you do is, you see, this is the thing, the reason it's so expensive is it's a special gold luster. It's 24 karat gold for a start. And also... What you do is you you bisque fire the piece, then you I've got to take this out of the way so I can concentrate. You bisque fire the piece, then you glaze the piece. So that's the second firing, right? Bisque fire, fire one. Glaze the piece, fire two. That's usually when it's done. Then you apply the luster, the 24 karat gold, and then it goes back in again for a third firing at a very low temperature. So it goes in at about 750 degrees. It's still very hot, but it's not 1200. So there you go. So not only does it cost a fortune in gold luster, but it also costs a fortune in electric. So I'm beginning to think that this is definitely the cheaper option. Right, let's get this writing sorted. Now, this is where you probably want to practice on a bit of scrap first. Yeah. I think so too. Right, you ready? So let's get it going. And then you're going to copy. You're going to copy. Steady. Steady. Warm. And because the writing, it's the same with the dot, see? Because the writing, oh, this is so easy, Barbara, is not raised. It's just there. Look at that. Oh, can I show you? Look. Can you see it? How lovely is that? So now, my friends, this wonderful art by um, Francis that we've been watching. Sorry, Francis. We're on your trail now. It's all about the consistency of the mica powder. And like I say, I'm a big fan of the Perfect Pearls. We've always sold it. We've always used it because it's got the built-in... It's got the built-in um, sealant. Very important. Otherwise... you go like that and it comes off on your hands it's not very good is it right let's have a look this there and this my friends isn't as hard as we thought it would be isn't that the truth right here we go again I'm just going to load my my nib again and I hope that you you understand, right? Well, so what I've got going on here is I've got a bit of parchment where I'm run, letting it run, so I don't want to flood. The last thing you want to do is flood, but you'll find if you keep your nib clean 
and you've got your consistency right, it won't flood. It will just it will just come out lovely, right? Here you go. So you just that famous last words, you watch it go puddle. Right. So you just get it going, see? And then you just start smoothing it in. That's it. And if you're copy you're just copying, you're just running along on the front. Yeah. It's not bad, is it? And the best thing about this is you can use the plates or you can do what I was doing with the stamps as well. So nice to do. There. Best wishes this Christmas. Isn't that lovely? Hmm? So when you look up now, just go up to the top. It's rather nice. And if we go to... Oh, don't know, I'm in best dress. <laughs> now, let's compare. So there we've got best... Warm wishes at Christmas, right? And there we've got, let me just get a piece of, warm wishes at Christmas. Warm wishes this Christmas. So it's exactly the same. It's even finer. There you go. So you know now exactly when you look at this artwork and you think, no, can't do it, impossible, impossible. Well, actually, possible, okay? There you go. So let's come out a little bit. It's really tight here. That's it. And I think that was a good two hours and 40 minutes number four is best sorry paul you've lost me oh i see what you mean yeah on the dots absolutely the number four tool is the best tool now let me just say that this i would not wash this off you know um you you can if you want to but and the other thing is if you've only got a little bit of water in there and you do wash it off there you go. What you've actually got is a really nice mica wash there. And if you were doing watercolour, I'm just saying, right, if you were doing watercolour and you use this water to, um, with your colours, whether it were red or whatever, right, you'd get that beautiful shimmer in your colours too. So it's not to be wasted. That's all I'm saying. There you go. That goes on there. That's that. And this, again, if this is my gold project, right, and I'm going to, and I'm doing that, I'm not going to wash that off. I'm going to leave that on my mix mat. And when it's bone dry, all I've got to do is squeeze some water. Look, put the water, take that, rejuvenate, and I can use this again and again and again. Just need to put it in a safe place once it's dry. I've got my taste, my tester, so I can, I definitely can put my tester. I can, I've cleaned my, my, I know that that's lovely and clean, right? So that's good to go. And that, that, my friends, is my set. Now, if I, if I want to go festive, I can do exactly the same thing with the red, the blue, the green, or the white. Entirely up to you. So there you go. That, my friends, brings us, I think, to the end of a rather long session. But I hope that you, you learned plenty. You know, just a quick recap. If I just, let me just put this to one side so I don't spoil it and then I'm going to go and give go and give Eric a cuddle he's not doing very well Eric is not a lover Eric is the little cat that broke his leg 
and he's not happy. He's not happy. He's not happy, Bunny. Well, you wouldn't be in a cage with a leg like that. <laughs> right, let's just check. Little recap, friends. So the first thing we did, let's see, we learned how to use the Pico and how to line it up. Then the next thing we did, we learned about the number one and the number two tools and the different mats. And we made that we, we did the embossing on the berries. Yeah. And then we also, we learned how to use the mats and how to use the number one tool when we went with the grid patterns, right, to just add interest. You know, we borrowed this idea just to add interest to those borders. And you could do, I mean, on this green one, honestly, I could add this after I've applied color too. We did it bef before, then we applied color, and then we learned how to dorse with a blending nib, right? So we use B pencils, blending pencils. Then we use the blending nib with dorso oil on a spot on sponge just to, to blend out the color and what a difference that makes, right? Then we also learned the tissue trick, the traditional tissue trick where you, you dorse a larger area using the same, it's the same principle, do you remember? So we did that as well. Then we went we went on the gold trail, and we did a bit of an experiment with two knee, with the two um, the embossing tool number two, number three, and number four. And we came to the conclusion that number four is perfect because you've got no little hillocks to contend with. Same for the writing, very gently, but it was. It was perfect enough to be able to, to write in gold really perfectly. So, so I think, you know, I wanted to go to, I had so much lined up. I had all these lovely um, tricks and tips, but do you know what? I think we've done plenty for one day. I really do. Maybe I'll, do you know what? I may use this as my first pre-recorded YouTube to show you the different edges so that we can we can take a, a look at the little tag, you know, because that is going to tie in really brilliantly with that, that fantastic advent plate that we're going to release with the final collection of Linda Williams' set of five, well, 25 Christmas treasures. And the, the last set of five are they're really, really different, you know, like chandeliers and yeah, just quite lovely, actually. Very, very beautiful. So I think you'll enjoy that. You know, when you get the drops and the, it will be special. Anyway, so that's Thursday, don't forget. But on Monday, I'll see you in the shack. If you've got time, that will be at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to do the dahlia. We're going to complete the dahlia. Um, I'm really chuffed that we've done this gold, though. I think you'll be happy with what we've done. And other than that, uh, Thursday, new and exclusive. Uh, Tuesday, Groovy Tuesday with Paul. Uh, and then Friday, it's uh, Cracker Jack. No, it's not. On Friday, it's um, the mixed media shows on TV. Yeah, we're having a dye extravaganza. So some beautiful dyes, because it's Black Friday, isn't it? So irresistible sales, beautiful dyes. That's what we're on. Anyway, thank you for your company. Paul, thank you so much for helping. I know it's been quite a long evening, but it's been enjoyable. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you had, I hope that you took something from this session. Okay, lots of love. Sorry about the freezing. Don't know why. It's a glitch. It's the gremlins. Lots of love. Have a great weekend and be safe.